Hi, my name is Raki Rahman. I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft Canada. And today I wanted to talk to you about confidential analytics with Apache Spark on SGX enabled containers. So the architecture that you can see on the screen, essentially what we want to do is have PI data that is being loaded um, into Azure uh, SQL database with always encrypted on secure enclaves. Uh, that data is essentially going to be stored in an encrypted format uh, with the column master key being stored on an MHSM, on an Azure Key Vault. And uh, once this data has been stored uh, within the SGX Enclave, essentially what we want to do is take the next step forward, which is to perform confidential analytics um, with Apache Spark, um, which is going to be running within SGX. So essentially what you see on the, on the right-hand side of the screen is uh, we're going to have a, a little demonstration of, uh, of running Spark uh, as we know it today. Uh, no SGX, essentially, we're going to be taking the open source version of Spark, and uh, we're going to basically take the data uh, against a JDBC connection, load it into our, uh, our Spark um, uh, execution environment. And what we're gonna do is we're basically going to simulate a malicious admin uh, that has root access, basically, to your containers uh, to go in and essentially perform a memory dump. And what you're going to see is that uh, when you run Spark um, in, a, in a normal environment with no SGX, you can basically have the malicious admin exfiltrate the data out. Uh, this is going to be the first scenario that we're going to look at. The second scenario, uh, which is where we're going to be essentially taking the Spark runtime, and we're going to be running it on uh, what is called a, a DC series VM. So this is a confidential computing VM within Azure. And we're essentially going to be running Spark within the Scone runtime. Um, and we're going to see how this benefits us in order to um, have our encrypted data within Spark perform rich analytics. And uh, even with uh, root access, malicious admins or hackers uh, cannot ac get access to our data. So that's essentially going to be our second scenario. So let me go ahead and uh, open up uh, what you see on my screen here. This is basically uh, the first scenario. So here what we're going to do is we're going to be running a Spark job uh, essentially on, on my laptop. Uh, this is a Surface Laptop 3 and we're essentially we have a Spark running on a Docker container. Um, and this is uh, identical to if you were to run Spark in any other environment essentially. So what you see on the right here is basically the demo, uh, demo diagram that I'm going to be taking you through as I run um, each of the commands. Uh, this is the code repository for my repo uh, that you'll have access to on uh, on GitHub. And uh, here I'm going to essentially go ahead and start up uh, Docker and we're going to be seeing uh, Spark boot up. So what I'm doing right now is I'm basically going ahead and uh, doing a Docker run and I am starting my container. I am exposing the ports for the Spark runtime um, as well as Log.io, which is a logging uh, software. Uh, that you'll see that is running within the container. So essentially what this container is doing is it's cloning uh, the contents of, of my repo, which is, uh, which is right over uh, here. And it is basically pulling that in um, all of the code into, into itself. And so that's basically this piece here where uh, the container at the start, start of the runtime is doing a git clone. And you can see that Spark um, has started up and uh, so has uh, uh, Log.io if I do a refresh. So let's quickly take a look at um, the, the script that basically performed the container runtime. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Docker entry point. And as you can see, essentially, every time I have this, uh, this normal container, again, it's not running on SGX uh, boot up, um, is uh, it, it removes all the uh, old Git clones. It basically does a fresh clone of the Git repo. Um, it does a cleanup of the file permissions. So since I'm using a Windows machine and this is a uh, Linux container, I have to basically do this DOS to Unix conversion. Uh, we go ahead and start Spark, which is what you saw here. Uh, we, uh, we basically start Log.io, which is this logging software that you're going to see that gives us real-time logs. And that's pretty much it. This is basically a, uh, a vanilla Spark uh, container uh, that is uh, now up and running. So let's go ahead and do a clear. And uh, let me walk you through the, the simple code that we're going to run. So essentially, I've got, as again, uh, going back to our architecture diagram earlier, I've got a SQL database that has uh, always encrypted a secure enclave. So essentially, all the data that I have in my SQL database is secure. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to basically go ahead and pull that data into Spark using JDBC and perform some analytics with it. 
So as you can see here, basically I have this very simple Spark job. Uh, it just does a print statement. It starts a Spark session. Um, it does a Spark uh, dot read uh, from JDBC. I'm going to be passing in my JDBC connection here. Uh, I just basically go ahead and do a select star on this table and uh, I do a load. Um, I do I do a, a dot limit dot show on uh, basically a print statement uh, for the first 10 rows. Um, and then I, uh, I go to sleep. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to be simulating a memory hack uh, while my Spark job is running to basically showcase uh, how someone that has root access can basically go ahead and dump out the data. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I don't have the JDBC string uh, obviously uh, um, uh, put in my Git repo. So I'm basically going to go ahead and localize that. And uh, I'm going to take my JDBC connection and basically pass it in. And uh, I'll bore this part of the video so you can't see my password. But I have my JDBC string put in. I'm going to write back my file. And now my, uh, my script is essentially ready to go. So before I run the Spark job, which will uh, uh, which will uh, take place quite quickly, let me go ahead and show you what the uh, memory dump looks like, just so you can kind of understand um, how this can be done in practice. So essentially, as you can see in the repo, I've got uh, one script here, uh, which is a shell script. Uh, this is a uh, memory dump dot, uh, dot shell. And essentially what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, first start off by getting the process ID of the, uh, of the PySpark process um, and getting that into this variable. Um, I'm going to print the PID and then what I'm going to do is I have this other script that I'm going to get into right now uh, and that script has been written so that you basically pass it a PID and it dumps out um, all the memory content um, of that uh, particular PID and puts it into this uh, file called contentmemory.txt. Um, after that what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do a grep on that file for Alexander and the reason I'm doing that is because uh, Essentially, I, I, I know there are a few last names within my database that starts with Alexander. And, and so essentially just for showcasing uh, the fact that we get that data out, I'm going to do a grep for it. Um, and then if the memory dump succeeds, we'll basically go ahead and print that out um, in the shell. And if it fails, we'll, uh, we'll show why it fails. Um, in this case, because we're not running on SGX and our code is basically not um, within the secure enclave, um, we are going to see the memory dump. So if I go into this uh, Python script again, this is uh, just something that um, uh, that is, I, I got from the internet, uh, nothing, nothing crazy going on, but essentially what, what it does is that you, you give it a PID, um, you go ahead and uh, what happens is the script basically in, in Linux, there's a maps file, which essentially goes ahead and takes a PID and then, uh, it, it basically returns a, uh, start, uh, segment for the memory and the end segment. And then, uh, this, this script right here basically goes ahead and, and reads against that segment, the region. And uh, it basically dumps that content to STD out. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically print it. Okay. So now that my uh, script has been localized, essentially what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, run the script. I'm going to be passing in the uh, JDBC connection, uh, the JDBC driver for, uh, for Azure SQL with always encrypted. And I'm giving it basically, as you can see, this, uh, this uh, script. And we're going to be running the output. So when I go ahead and run this, what you're going to see is in log IO on the right, um, the logs from the Spark job get run. And so when I get to this uh, sleep.10, that is basically my queue to run the uh, memory hack. So that's it right here. I'm going to go ahead and as you can see, my, uh, my script is doing its job. So if I go back to my memory dump script, uh, we're attempting a memory dump. And this is, as I said, not an SGX uh, CPU. And so the memory dump actually does succeed. And so as you can see, uh, the part where my Spark script did a uh, limit uh, uh, dot show, uh, I have uh, two Alexanders, right? This is basically just my SQL database. And uh, when I did the memory hab, as you can see, basically uh, that data, uh, once I grep for it uh, right here, um, I am actually getting the data right out of the, um, the process memory and I've dumped it out. And, and so the idea is um, essentially, um, my, my hacker who basically now has access to my entire memory dump. So I can actually go ahead and kind of open this up and, and show you, uh, what that, uh, file looks like. So if I go into my memory, so as you can see, you know, there's obviously a lot of stuff here about 38,000 lines, but essentially this is the uh, entire process memory for that, for that spark process. And so, um, my point is, uh, we basically have our uh, data successfully ex exfiltrated and uh, our data is essentially no longer safe. So that's basically, you know, if you were to run Spark in any 
um, environment, you would basically um, have this uh, risk uh, with root access. So that's the first scenario. Um, let's go over to our second scenario now, which is uh, basically we're going to be doing the same thing, but showcasing um, how this process would be different uh, within SGX. So as you can see, I'm basically going to be doing the, uh, the same thing in this, um, except the difference is now I'm going to be running Spark um, on an SGX VM. So this is basically an Azure VM that I have. Uh, it's a DCS series VM that, is a, that has a uh, SGX processor, Intel SGX processor. And I'm basically going to be running uh, my Spark process within this VM. Um, and I'm basically going to show you how the a scenario that we looked at just now um, is different when you are running your process uh, within a uh, secure enclave. So same process here. Um, I'm basically going to go ahead and uh, start up my um, my uh, container. But before that, what I'm going to do is um, remember I said uh, we're running a, a, a container a process called scone. And so what I'm doing here is basically I'm export exporting a environment variable and I'm giving scone the uh, the mounted path for for the SGX driver basically scone needs this um, in order to um, have the entry point into the Intel uh, processor and so now I'm gonna basically go ahead and run my container I am giving it that variable which basically lets scone mount spark into uh, the uh, SGX processor I'm giving it the same name I'm exposing the ports and I'm gonna go ahead and click run and uh, you'll see that this container is essentially going to start up essentially identical to the previous one. Um, so once this is done, I'm going to show you that Spark is going to start up and uh, so is Log.io. And uh, once that Git clone is done, essentially, let me go ahead and show you the entry point script. It is identical um, to what we looked at earlier. Again, we're just doing a Git clone. Uh, we're doing a quick cleanup here. We're starting Spark. We're starting Log.io. And I am passing some variables in. Uh, for Scone in order to basically go ahead and uh, uh, run Spark in the uh, secured runtime. So similarly, I'm going to go ahead and uh, so let me do a refresh here so you can see that Spark Master has in, indeed started up. And I've got Log.io uh, over here as well, similar to last time. Uh, once again, I'm going to basically go ahead and localize my uh, my uh, SQL script, uh, my Python script that is basically going to run my run my job. And uh, once that's done, I'm basically going to repeat the same process, except uh, we're going to see what the value add of, uh, of SGX is. So let me go ahead and uh, once again, I'm going to uh, quickly just blur this uh, part out and add in my JDBC container uh, uh, connection string. I'm going to go ahead and write that out. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically perform the same steps that we did, right? So basically, we're going to go ahead and run my uh, Spark submit. I am passing in the uh, the location of my code once again, and uh, we're going to perform the same uh, same memory dump and and see what that looks like. So I've got I've basically done a Spark submit of my job. Uh, log IO is going to take a couple seconds to essentially go ahead and start streaming in the logs, and uh, the logs are now streaming. And when I get to my uh, sleep statement, I'm going to go ahead and um, perform the memory dump, and as you can see, the uh, the situation here is uh, is quite different than what we looked at, right? So, first of all, we can see that our uh, our Spark um, execution runtime is actually running within a, a secure enclave, and this is actually the hash of the enclave. And the same script which uh, had basically gone ahead and printed our Alexander after the grep, um, this time it actually failed. Um, and, and the reason being is because our Spark um, process is actually running within a secure enclave. And so physically speaking, um, the even though our admin here has root access, they cannot go and essentially uh, read for, uh, the data from the memory uh, with the same script. And so as a result, uh, basically we get this uh, we get this failure uh, where the PID is, is secure, right? And so essentially, uh, basically what we just demonstrated is that um, even if you know, you have your container running, let's say, within a AKS cluster, it's secured. Um, if you had, let's say, a malicious admin who has root access, someone who has, you know, full privileges over your environment, even someone like that cannot go and essentially um, take a look at uh, what the uh, what the um, output of your Spark process is, right? So obviously, you know, I've gone ahead and printed this just for demonstration, but uh, my point is uh, essentially, uh, whatever is running within the uh, Spark environment uh, within this SGX is, is fully secure, even with root access. And obviously, you know, if you have a hacker uh, try to come into your environment, 
um, uh, it's going to be secure against them as well, right? Because they're basically not going to be able to uh, reach what's within within the sun plane. So now that it's done, uh, what I want to do is, uh, you know, we, we we took a look at our code again. Uh, right now, it's it is running uh, in uh, in plain text. So you know, we've we've secured our data, we've secured our memory. But one of the things that's not secure as of yet is our code is still in in plain text, right? So for example, uh, someone who has uh, root access to this container or a hacker. Uh, they could potentially go and and still kind of read, uh, similar to how uh, we were just reading the uh, uh, the PySpark script. They could read and you know they could get a sense of kind of what your uh, uh, what your uh, logic is and what you're trying to do with your data, obviously, right? Um, and so what we want to do is we want to take this process a step further, and we want to showcase how uh, how Scone can actually run fully encrypted um, code. Um, on top of the encrypted data, right? So what we're going to do is we're basically going to take this uh, this Python script that we have and we're going to encrypt it. Um, and uh, what you're going to see is that Scone runs transparently on this encrypted version of the code. Um, so if I go ahead and actually run this script, uh, which is right here uh, on Visual Studio, basically we're going to use Scone to uh, uh, generate something called a uh, secured um, uh, file system and we're going to basically go ahead and encrypt our files out. So I'm going to basically uh, run this uh, shell script that you can see here and uh, what that's going to do is basically it's going to take our uh, our code which was here and we're, it's going to basically generate a uh, encrypted version of it. So if I go ahead and show you basically we just generated this uh, this new file so if I go ahead and uh, do a lookup as you can see the same code file uh, that I uh, previously had, which is obviously in plain text, is uh, is now encrypted, right? So, you know, technically you could do this before you load this into the container, or you can have some sort of DevOps process, you name it, right? Like this is this is basically uh, whatever best practice you and your organization follows. But the point is we have now gone ahead and secured our code. Now, what I want to showcase is uh, essentially um, running our Spark job with a with a Spark submit. Um, same, same as we did before, except this time I'm going to run it on the encrypted version um, of the data and show you uh, that the output is, uh, is just as transparent. Spark basically um, has no visibility into the fact that the code is uh, um, encrypted. So yeah, as you can see, I'm basically running the same job, except this time I'm pointing it to the encrypted version um, of our code. Uh, and uh, when I go ahead and run it, you're immediately going to start seeing the logs similar to last time essentially start popping out. Um, and so basically Spark has taken the encrypted version of our code and it is running it just as transparently. And once again, if I have a hacker that is basically going ahead and uh, trying to access uh, the content of the data from memory, um, Scone has now protected us. And as you can see, uh, that data is uh, no longer accessible. So that's it for the demonstration. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any question, feel free to open a um, issue on my uh, GitHub repo. Thanks for watching.